come, and this is a review test. The first part, the first page, is all from the beginning of the chapter. They're all right triangles that have altitudes drawn in them. So these are all the geometric means. So you got to write a proportion for these. Uh, remember, this piece is a geometric mean, so it goes in there twice. It doesn't matter if you put them that way or that way. And when it's this piece, you put each part of the hypotenuse, 4 and 16. Now, if you notice, it doesn't say it'll leave in radical form, right? Yeah. So these, you can just round to the nearest tenth. So when you solve this one, x times x is x squared equals 16 times 4 is 64. So when you square root it, it's a perfect square. x equals 8. In number 2, which one is the geometric mean? 8. So when it's that piece, you put each part in there, 16 and x. So it's just 8 times 8 divided by 16, which is... And number three, which one's the geometric mean? Eight. Eight, the leg. So that goes in there twice. And when it's a leg, you use the piece hook to it and the entire length, which is what they're looking for, the x. So eight times eight divided by three is 21.3 repeating. So since it's a repeating decimal, make sure you label it as a repeating decimal. <coughs> Four, the geometric mean is the leg. So when it's the leg, you put the piece hook to it and the entire length, which just like the last one, that's what they're looking for. So six times six divided by four is nine. Number five, the geometric mean is the 12. And when it's this altitude piece, you put each part of the hypotenuse in there. So it's just 12 times 12 divided by eight is 18. Six, seven is the geometric mean. And again, a lot of these are the altitude. When it's the altitude, you put each piece in there. So it's seven times seven divided by three is 16.3 repeating. So again, if it's repeating, make sure you label it. Six times six divided by four. Um, seven and nine are similar because they have two X's in it. Ten is the geometric mean. So when it's the altitude, you put each part on there. So now when you solve this, what is X times two X? Squared, right. Remember an x times an x is an x squared. So 2x squared is going to equal 100. So when you solve this, you got to divide by 2. x squared equals 50, and then square root it. And again, these, they don't say to leave in radical form, so you can just round to the nearest tenth. 7.07, .07, which would be 7.1. So just remember, whenever you multiply an x times an x, you're going to get an x squared. Number eight, the leg is the geometric mean. So when it's one of these legs, you take the piece hook to it, and then what? Twelve. Yep, you got to add those together. It's twelve. So x times x, x squared equals three times twelve, thirty-six. 
So when you square root it, it's just six. Nine is like seven, because you're gonna have the X's in there. It's set up the same way, just different numbers. 16 is the geometric mean, and then you put this part and that part. So, x times 4x is 4x squared. 16 times 16 is 256. So what do you gotta do? Divide by four. Divide by four and then square root. So that's 64. And now when you square root it, you get eight. Yes. Um, okay, so what if the, uh, one of the legs was the geometric mean, and then the... Okay, what? Now I didn't hear anything. <laughs> One of the legs was a geometric mean. And it's a number. Um, and then there's still an x on the hypotenuse. So would you, when you do it, would you have to put like x plus the other number? You can, you can actually come up with your own labels. Um, so if it was one like this. So like say this was 10 and this was 3 and this was x like that. Yeah. The easiest way to do this, this would be the hardest way, 10 and 10, and then 3, and then x plus 3. Mm -hmm. But the easiest thing to do would just be to call the whole thing y. So then it'd be 3 and y. So you take 100 divided by 3 is 33.3 repeating. And then you just have to remember, oh, this obviously isn't the... But then you would just have to subtract me with that one. Okay. So this would work too. It's just you'd have to have an equation to solve it. Okay. Then these next six. Um, what do you got to do to solve each of these? Uh, Twelve x squared plus twenty squared divided by x squared. Close. Square root. Of square root. Yeah. Pythagorean theorem. On all of these, you know two sides. So if you know two sides, you can use the Pythagorean theorem. Uh, right here, make sure you leave it with the simplest radical form. So when it's a leg you're looking for, you've got to subtract them. 20 squared minus 12 squared, and then you square root it. So this is 256. And that is a perfect square, so it just turns out to be 16. Eleven, again, you're looking for a leg, so you need to subtract them. Thirteen squared minus twelve squared is twenty-five, which is a perfect square. So x is 5. 12, it's the hypotenuse you're looking for. So that means you've got to add them. You subtract them when it's a hypotenuse and leg. You add them when it's two legs. So 24 squared plus 7 squared. Is 625. That is a perfect square, also, just like these two. 25. Now, you should just glance back to make sure um, this is 16, this one is 5, this is 25. The hypotenuse always has to be the longest. If you got an answer where the hypotenuse isn't the longest, that just means you subtracted when you should have added or added when you should have subtracted. So that's an easy thing just to look back to make sure you did the right thing. Um, these next three, I don't, I think, if I remember right, are not perfect squares. So here it's two legs, so you got to square them and add them. Oops. So 
So 4 squared is 16 plus 6 squared, 36, is the square root of 52. Do we have to show the alternatives? Well, for these, yeah. To, to write it in simplest form. These you wouldn't have to because these you can just punch in a calculator. Um, so what perfect square goes into 52? Four. four and 13. 13. So then the four reduces to two squares of 13. So for 14, you're looking for a leg, which means you subtract them. 41 squared minus 7 squared, and then you square root it. 1632. So I just took a chance and divided it. 16 does go into it 102 times, which would be 4 square roots of 102. But I got to check 102 to make sure that doesn't reduce. Uh, 49 is about halfway there. 49 doesn't go into it. Um, 36 doesn't. Three is not a perfect square. Um, 25 I know doesn't. 16 doesn't. 9 doesn't. And 4 doesn't. So that is reduced. So again, when you're trying to find a number that goes into it, there's no magic way other than when you do a bunch, you just recognize. You just gotta do trial and error. Start dividing by perfect squares till you find one that goes into it. So for this one, we're looking for the hypotenuse. So you gotta square them and add them, and then square root it. 36 and 10 squared is 136. So, 64 does not go into it. You can always start about the middle. 49 won't go into it. 36 does not go into it. Um, 25 doesn't. 16 doesn't. 9 doesn't. 4 does. 4 times 34, so that would be 2 square roots of 34. <coughs> okay, for these, determine whether they can represent the side lengths. Remember what to check. Any two sides got to add up to more than the third side or else it wouldn't form a triangle. And then if they do, then you say whether it's right, obtuse, or acute. So I gave you that slip yesterday. Was anyone gone yesterday? Again, you need to memorize that for the test. Um, nine and four is more than nine. Nine and nine is more than four. So this forms a triangle. So you just choose the the longest side for the hypotenuse, nine is the longest, so it doesn't matter which one you choose. So on this one, when you do a squared plus b squared, obviously it's gonna be greater than c squared because nine squared plus four squared is more than nine squared. So, it's acute. so if it's greater, it is acute. Here, this forms a triangle because 9 and 12 is more than 15. 12 and 15 is more than 9. 9 and 15 is more than 12. So 9 squared plus 12 squared turns out to equal 15 squared. So it's right. Eight. No, not triangle. Because 3 and 5 only adds up to 8, which means it wouldn't form a point if you hooked them together. It'd be right on top of it. 19 it does. 13 and 11 is more than 8. 11 and 8 is more than 13. 13 and 8 is more than 11. So this one isn't written in order, remember. That's the hypotenuse. So you take 11 squared plus 8 squared and figure out how does it compare to 13 squared. It's obtuse. It's obtuse. 
This is 185. This is 169. It's greater than. So that's acute. Oh, no, it's It's backwards than what you would think. Acute is when it's greater than, obtuse is when it's less than. And when I say backwards, that means because an acute triangle, all the angles are less than 90, so that's why it's backwards. Obtuse, one of the angles is greater than 90. This forms a triangle. Six is the hypotenuse. Four squared plus five squared, how does it compare to six squared? 16 and 25 is 41, which is greater than 36, so that is also acute. <laughs> 21 forms a triangle. These two are more than that. These two are more than that. These two are more than that. 13 is the hypotenuse. So 10 squared plus 12 squared, how does that compare to 13 squared? <coughs> 244 and 169, that's greater, so that one is also acute. So there was no obtuses on this. Then the last page is the special triangles, which you don't need a calculator. You leave it in simplest radical form. It's just using the rules for the 45-45 and the 30-60. <coughs> so if you got those rules down, it's simple. If you don't have them down, you better memorize them. In a 45-45, the legs are equal, so x is 4. And the hypotenuse is just the leg times the square root of 2. On a 30-60-90, the hypotenuse x is just double the short leg, and the long leg is just the short leg times the square root of three. Remember to use the square root of three with the 3060s and the square root of two with the 4545s. Twenty-four. It's a 45, 45, so the legs are equal. So X and Y will be equal. And a leg is just half of the hypotenuse times the square root of two. Thirty, sixty, ninety. So X is the short leg. The short leg is half of the hypotenuse. Four and a half. And then the long leg is just the short leg times the square root of 3. 26, 30, 60, 90. We know the short leg, the hypotenuse is double the short leg. And the long leg is just the short leg times the square root of 3. 27 is a 45-45, which means the legs are equal, so x is 7, and the hypotenuse is just the, the leg times the square root of 2. 28, 45-45, so the legs are equal. And a leg is just half the hypotenuse times the square root of 2. So it's just half of 13, 6 and a half times the square root of 2. 30, 60, 90, we know the long leg. Now this is usually the trickiest one. So the short leg is the long leg times the square root of 3 divided by 3. This one does simplify. It's not wrong if you don't, though, because it doesn't say to. You could write that as 4 squared to 3, because 12 over 3 is 4. 
So then the hypotenuse is just double the short leg. So if you left it this way, you would write it as 24 squared to three over three, which would be eight squared to three. <coughs> And then the last one, it's a 36 to 90. Again, we know the long leg like this one. So the short leg is the long leg times the square root of three divided by three. Can't reduce it, five over three doesn't reduce, so you just leave it like that. And the hypotenuse is just double that. So remember, all you do is double that number. It's 10 squared to three over three. <coughs>